Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of a comedy advice podcast. Bye, babe. Love you. My sweet toots. Your nipples are very apparent, by the way. Just letting you know, babe. Man, I'm glad that you're out of frame now because those nips would be the point of focus for the fans and for me. It would have been an OnlyFans. I would have gotten a lot more views than I usually do. It's me. Satani. Your host and just lovable character. And I'm here with my whole family. Yeah, just hanging out on the couch. I am not able to get to my studio right now. So we're just making it do like we do. And I have a very exciting episode for you guys. Just a bundle of presents that I'm going to shit down your chimney because you guys have been all nice and maybe a little bit naughty, but in the way that Santa likes. Mm-mm. There goes my little nephew going in front of the frame. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Oh, he thinks it's so much fun. It's going to be a great time to edit. But guys, I'm going to try and keep this one short because I have an awesome episode for you. It's with Ben Brainerd from TikTok. Hey, buddy. No, no talking. Don't touch, please. It's going to be an excellent episode. TikTok star Ben Brainerd. He's got a lot of show. All right. I'm, I'm with my little nephew here, Valentino. And Valentino has something to say. Valentino. All right. Looks like somebody's got just a little, they're a little camera shy and that's okay because there are millions of people that watch this. So I understand the pressure that goes behind this. But anyway, Ben Brainerd, an amazing guy. He's going to be at the Tempe Improv. No, that's wrong. He's going to be at Stand Up Live this Wednesday. So go on, get your grubby little hands on those tickies. Go see him. Give him a hug. I don't know if what he's doing with Omicron. Go follow him, support him, show him some love. And while you're at it, show me all the love that you have to give that's remaining. I'm usually like a sloppy second lover. Sounded way too weird and accurate. But you know what? That's what I'll take. I will take your refill of love and just go support me. You can now, guess what, guys? You can now leave a rating on Spotify. So if you go on over there to my podcast and you've listened to a couple episodes before, you have the option to give me some delicious, tasty stars. Mm, they're so good. They taste like rigatoni. Just so yummy and tasty and squeezy. That's my food. For, well, no, I'm getting a lot of food, especially in the Christmas season. Oh, man, this eggnog is filling the paunch, but I am not going to stop eating. And I would love to have some reviews for dessert. So please leave them. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And come see me, Trash or Treasure. Last one was a blast, and I really appreciate all you guys that came out. If you guys want to come to the next one, it's January 11th, and I'll put a ticket. I'll put a link in the show notes. I think it's out, but if it's not out, um, we'll figure it out. You know, you can just ask me, DM me, follow me on Instagram, TikTok if you haven't already. And I think that's it. So I'm going to let you guys back to the main part of the show the, the just mm, the meatiest the beef of the pod okay so dig on in or the tofu for all of you vegans out there mm -hmm. please no here i'll press recording in progress the record button recording in progress okay you heard it too it. fantastic yeah. that's great it had to warn me that you were trying to get my identity uh, like, it always hey, it does just said please don't say your social security number your mother's maiden name or your birthday on here and i was like good news i don't know those things <laughs> Linda is very thorough. She yeah, always I'd have to, to call my mother to get those three things. So, well, good thing we've got on the other line, <sighs> Mrs. Brainerd, and she's yeah. gonna is give Shelley? all that information. That's the old Shell's bell. She's here? ready to divulge all that information. She would um, immediately. She has no <laughs> oh, Shell. Oh, Shelly. Well, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe we'll have that as a Patreon episode. <laughs> Is that uh is that straight vanilla? Is there some chocolate fudge on that? There's uh it is well it was supposed to be a cookies and cream milkshake, but apparently there was a glitch in the system that was like co uh, chocolate chip cookies instead of co cookies and cream. It was like chocolate chips instead of o uh, Oreos. But oh, the person making it thought it said cookies and cream anyway, so they put cookies and cream. And then halfway through, realized it said chocolate chips. So they just put chocolate chips in there. And so I got a half cookies and cream, half chocolate chip milkshake uh, for the price of a regular cookies and cream milkshake, which I feel like I came out the winner here. I feel like, yes. Also, what an attitude of that worker. Just being like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not going to fix Whoops. the mistake per se. I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm going to turn this mistake into a really good time for you. I just had a Dairy Queen treat. Mm. And I'm at the age now. They flip it upside down? They always do. Yeah. 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 Every, they never fail. I thought, 
will you will, will this be the time? And they're like, I'll be four fifty four. Whoop. <laughs> and the the sad thing is though, I'm at the age where my metabolism will not allow my body to stay the same size if I have more than a mini. So I get a mini. Wow. Yeah. That and... sounds like a sad time. The last time I was at a, a, a Dairy Queen, the guy in front of me ordered a bucket of shrimp. <laughs> what? What? And it has stuck with me every waking minute of my life. <laughs> it's been years. I haven't been to a Dairy Queen since. I just Do have you... a very distinct and vivid memory of a man <laughs> alone, by the way, an adult male walk into Dairy Queen alone and ordered a bucket of shrimp. And they said, yes, they were like, yep, we have that. Here you go. Do you think that they dropped it upside down first before they gave it to him? I certainly hope they did. <laughs> There's just so many pieces of this information, like this story that baffle me. First of all, why do you go to a Dairy Queen and not order it? Like, I know they have stuff that's not ice cream. It's, a, it's called the DQ Grill and Chill. There's the grill. No one gets hot dogs. No, this no. Man, but this man went for the thing that even that shouldn't even be in the grill part. You don't get seafood at a place that's not a seafood restaurant. You just don't. It's not safe. No, absolutely not. Especially if they got it in a place like Arizona where there's no. Yeah. No. I mean, it was Florida, which is fine. There's just okay. seafood out okay. like swimming in the air. But I, I just I don't feel OK ordering seafood from a place that doesn't specialize in seafood. Specifically, an ice cream shop. That's not. No, that's not okay for seafood. And then this was the part that really bothered me the most was um, a bucket. <laughs> that was the size they offered. <laughs> <laughs> they they probably only have buckets of shrimp. They're like they I, people will only order this once every two hundred years, and when right. it's time, it's bucket time. I want to know how much bigger they could have gone like how big is a bucket? could he have brought his own bucket <laughs> can you bring your own bucket in a dairy queen and be like i would like to fill this with shrimp and they would would they would have to be like that's 4.99 yeah absolutely <laughs> is it like harkins where you bring it back the bucket and then it's only a dollar refill for it it's just <laughs> Do you think there's smaller sizes that are also like weirdly shaped? The you know, to measure, I would like a goblet. I want a goblet of shrimp <laughs> from the Dairy Queen. Do you guys have that? Is that a thing that I can, I would like a bathtub? <laughs> can, can I have a shoe's worth of uh, of shrimp? <laughs> I would like a boot. <laughs> a, boot like a, 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 a boot. A boot's worth. <laughs> Oh, I was so thrown off by that. Like I, the only thing that the only thought that really stuck in my head besides fear was, that, wow, this man has good health insurance. Either that, or he just wants to die. He's got, <laughs> or he's ready to go. Yeah, I never <laughs> thought about that. I thought for sure this man was just a fearless guy because he had like corporate health insurance and he was living. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can harm me. Yes, I'll take the bucket of shrimp. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah, that's a new level of confidence. That like there's, is... there's like white man, there's mediocre white male confidence, which is exorbitantly high. But then above that is mediocre white man with health insurance confidence, which is basically the same thing, but you're willing to die because you think you can be saved by health insurance. And then, and then there's, Ordering a bucket of shrimp at Dairy Queen alone. <laughs> that is the, the epitome of. I of, just want a quarter of, of what he had. Just a quarter. God. Just a, well, just a smidgen. Maybe we can get him on the line later in the show. <laughs> just. <laughs> if he's still alive. <laughs> if he's still, maybe we can read his obituary later. Like, the man was. I know found. they didn't. I know they didn't, but part of me believes that, like, as a side with the bucket of shrimp, they also gave him, like, a, a pre-checked-in hospital band. <laughs> They're like, here's your bucket of shrimp, and also put this on your wrist, and you just go in to the ER or whatever. They'll see you immediately. That, I love that. Or they gave him uh, an EpiPen or just the <laughs> antidote of whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's just a vial marked the antidote. There's no further <laughs> instructions. 
Oh, God. Well, this is a beautiful conversation. And man, I feel like that shrimp guy is either living his dreams or living in the nebulous clouds of the heavens. He's, or, living, uh, he's living in dreams. He, he's living. He's gone full Leonardo DiCaprio. He is yeah. climbing buildings, just holding huge amounts of shrimp just you falling know, from the sky i heard there was a scene from inception that never actually got put into the movie because people thought well, well that that's too far that couldn't even happen in dreams and it's where leonardo dicaprio walks to a dairy queen and orders a bucket of shrimp and they just hand it to him and people are like that's not that's not real you can't do that not even in a dream do people do that i watched a man do it in real life and it terrifies me <laughs> <laughs> it you know if you buy the dvd slash blu-ray they do have it in the bonus features the deleted scenes where right, leonardo right, dicaprio right, right, right. that's like, actually remember, the, remember agent cody banks to the dvd <laughs> that you could play along with it would stop the movie every so often and be like do you remember what this guy's tie was it's like that but in the middle of the movie it would stop and be like do you want leonardo dicaprio to go make the worst decision a human person has ever made and if you say, yeah. if you say yes he just he goes to a Dairy Queen and orders a bucket of shrimp. That it still baffles. A bucket. Who and okay. That you know, Christopher Nolan, he originally had it to be the token of Leonardo DiCaprio to decide whether it was a dream or not. You know, that one piece yeah. was a bucket of shrimp. Yeah, if it yeah, yeah. flipped over, <laughs> then it was real life. This but, is the M. Night Shyamalan twist of, of of like real life. This really is. I wish I knew other shrimp terms what is a sh is a shrimp a, cr cr a crustacean crustacean there we go crustacean it's it's similar to a crawdad but it's not the same thing that are, are crawdad and shrimp is like shrimp city boy and then crawdad is like country boy cousin um well so there's a debate between crawdad and crawfish uh but, but shrimp is not i don't think shrimp is in that debate i think okay i googled it because i don't want to be wrong here the main difference between crawfish and shrimp is that the crawfish is an exclusively freshwater decapod with a pair of large front claws whereas the shrimp is usually a saltwater decapod with a long tail furthermore shrimps are larger than crawfish wait did you just say shrimps is that the plural yeah, yeah. okay Thank you. What did you think it was like fish or meese? I thought, yeah, I thought it was shrimp. Just Shrimps. I have a, a a bucket of shrimp, or I have a lot of shrimp. So it's sort of like fish and fishes, where like if you have okay. a bunch of the same fish, it's fish. Mm -hmm. But if you have a bunch of different types of fish, then it's fishes. Like all the fishes in the sea, because you're talking uh... about multiple types of fish. Like there's grouper and trout and snapper and Okay. Okay. Is yeah, it so like multiple types of shrimps? I know that every time I open my mouth, my IQ is showing and it gets lower and lower. But is it like monies and money? You know, when people talk about monies, have you ever heard somebody say monies? Uh, only is... ironically. <laughs> only as a joke, I think. I think the guy that I heard say monies wasn't from the U.S., so maybe that's uh. Well, I think it was um, Mr. Krabs. Oh, he that's lives right. In Bikini Bottom, wherever that is. I don't know if that's in the U.S. or not, but David Hasselhoff was there once. So that's that's very true. Our, that's a our, deep our, 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 our. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we have just covered the aquatic landscape in this podcast mm -hmm. and we, we're just, you know, wading in the surface and I feel like we can go even deeper. And I guess I should introduce myself for all of you newcomers. It's me, Steph and Satani of a comedy advice podcast and joining me, the lovely, not crustacean, uh, ruling the nation with a beautiful state of mind. Everybody welcome Ben Brainerd. Clap, Hello. clap, clap. Hi, clap. thank you for having me. Happy to be here talking. This is the Ocean Podcast. I'm so glad you could join me. This is my podcast now, and we're talking about crustaceans today. This, yeah, we are going to cover. <laughs> we're, next, we're going to move on to sea turtles, and oh boy, it's going to wow. be so I beautiful. saw one today. Oh, no, seriously? No, I, didn't. I saw a regular tortoise. Oh, man. That, I, I ordered a bucket of tortoise at my Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. Once you get past it's the shell. It's flipped upside down. The shell is the bucket. <laughs> It's you, just a regular tortoise. They just gave you a tortoise. They're like, I would like a bucket of tortoise. And they're like, well, here's here's this. It's upside down. If you hold it by the shell, it's kind of like a bucket and the tortoise is in the shell. We thought it was a bucket of shrimp at first. So there are some shrimp mm-hmm. inside. But if you just shake it out, then they'll come yeah, out. Yeah, they're like, here's this. the tortoise. Here's a bucket of tortoise. Here's the bucket of shrimp. You can see how we got these confused. One of them is a bucket and the other one is a uh, turtle shell. And they look the same. So if you close your eyes and uh, don't touch it and someone tells you that they are, then maybe. Also, here's the antidote for, yeah. for both. Here's it's the like antidote. A... You can figure that one out. <clears throat> it's Windex. That's all it is. It's a it placebo. bothers me. It bothers me that antidote, the prefix anti means like opposite, but there's no oh, yeah. regular dote. Oh, yeah. yeah. Po- it's called poison. You need you need antidotes for poison. Uh, would that sound dotes. would that sound much more cute if I said I doted you? Uh, yeah. What if I don't know how how dark I can make these jokes on your podcast. please please. I mean I don't have any lights. This is this could get as was, dark as yeah. You I was gonna say like Bill Cosby just walks around with a bucket. Of <laughs> That's how he got caught. He was in prison. And they were just like Cosby can't be doting people, man. And he was like, but. <laughs> Pudding pops and the dote. I'm a doting bar. Pudding pops and dotes. Oh, this is oh well. What a doting individual that deserves what he. Yeah. Okay. That's a new angle here. He's doting is a regular word, and it doesn't. It means a happy thing. Yes. Yes. You dote on something, and you need the antidote to save your life from it. That's not how. I hate I, words. I agree with you. I, it's well, a love-hate okay. relationship for me. Doting, right? To dote. Uh, be extremely and uncritically fond of. Why would anyone need an antidote? Why would you need anything to be not extremely un- and uncritically fond of something? I would love people to dote on I don't want anybody to antidote on me. Ex- yes, exactly. I feel well. I feel like the East Coast is full of antidotes. That's what it just seems like. Uh, yeah, Northeast specifically. <clears throat> yes, and, uh, everyone up in the everyone in the Northeast is antidote. I agree, man. But you know what? I have to say, I did love a little antidote every once in a while because coming from Arizona, everybody's so sweet and so yeah. doting, and yeah. to go to New Jersey and people to be like, <laughs> when I. What when I hey, ask somebody, you. yeah, oh my god, it's so refreshing. It's like a splash of cool water. At first, it's a little shocking, but then I'm like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it fuck brings me. you back down. You're like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't deserve niceties. Yeah, who who am I? But then you really get to receive the goodness, the genuine kindness of someone because in Arizona, if you hit it off with a stranger. Make a good friend. You know, you're talking over mm-hmm. a bucket of shrimp. And then you mm-hmm. say, hey, you want to hang out sometime? They go, yeah, take my number, blah, blah, blah. You text yeah, yeah. them. The next day, they're like, oh, sorry, dude. Can't hang out. Maybe this is just a personal thing. But then- No, no, things, no, no. It's a, very, it's a very West Coast, East Coast thing where like, if you say you're going to do something and you're on the East Coast, you better fucking do it. Or else it's a dishonor on you, dishonor on your family, dishonor on your cow. The West Coast is like, I said I was going to do it, and I meant it, and I re- really would like to. But if we didn't plan it right now, bro, we're going to have to plan it. Like, life just happens. The work-life balance on the West Coast is tilted way closer towards life, and the East Coast is way more towards work. So if a guy on the East Coast says, we're going to fucking hang out, that's work now. That's a job. He's committed to that. We're hanging out. West Coast, yes. bro, if it's sunny tomorrow, <clears throat> I don't know. I might go to the beach. You can join you, me at the beach. Absolutely. But I'm not going to like go to D- DQ with you again. Yeah, ex- exactly. And you know what? I feel uh, so lucky, nay, honored to be able to speak about the regional and state idiosyncrasies with such a wonderful person. Because, man, have you really gone through the ringer state by state and just mm-hmm. p- plucked out the uniquities of, oh God, here I go again. The uniqueness of each state. I don't know if that's a word, but I knew what you meant. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I'm glad you're on my team. It's, you know, Steph Curry needs an assist every once in a while. So. What up? I'm Clay and my ankles aren't broke. <laughs> Beautiful. And all 
curry up to my conclusion. But I also I did want to say that when I first heard about you, I was not a big TikToker, and I actually Ryan Kelly was coming to town, mm -hmm. and I started researching him and listening to some of his stuff, and I stumbled across uh, across, across the good, the a Dan, cron. and the Florida man, <laughs> and. Boy, oh boy, I told Ryan this too. It's one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. Well, thank you, because we have no idea what we're doing. Oh, that's one of the good things about it. I mean, you guys are like a Dairy Queen with a bucket of shrimp. It's just... <laughs> we're just out here, man. We Nobody asks us to be here. We're not leaving, though. Yeah, oh, and I, I'm so glad you guys are here to stay, because each one of you are so... You have your... You're so unique. You have your own flavor and together you guys are just like this delicious aioli that i can just slather on to whatever i'm doing folding laundry pfft, aioli mowing aioli. the lawn i don't know if you want to spread some aioli on your laundry but absolutely if it's garlic aioli smell nice absolutely oh there you go i mean it hides the scent of the stinky I've feet i've never been described as an aioli before and let me tell you i am putting that in my tinder bio now Oh, they, okay. Sometimes I'm just when I'm a creamy aioli, <laughs> and I'm feeling saucy. Add so. me to anything. <laughs> I go real good on top. Oh, you do. And I started to see where this aioli went. On what dishes is it good on? And it seems like everything because you're everywhere and you're great, including yeah, I'm all uh, over the place. All over the place. And um, I also just wanted to talk briefly about mm -hmm. your. Shit. I mean, we could go into life if you want, because it's a fascinating marvel in its own. Where yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's happened to me, and I've just been in it. You, you're just. Well, I feel like you've had a little. You've had some hands on the joystick, and you've been pressing the buttons, getting your fighter yeah, jet. Yeah, but it's it's sort of like when you play Skyrim, but you tell yourself you're gonna do every side quest you come across. And that's, that's just how I've lived my life. It's just like, oh, that's a new waypoint marker. Let me just stop there for a second. <laughs> and as entertaining as it is to do every side quest in Skyrim, I've never played Skyrim, but I've watched my brother play Skyrim while I was playing Super Smash Brothers, and it was right. just as entertaining. So yeah. I loved being on the wayside to see you do every quest. And man, you, I mean, where can we start? First off, I know that your TikTok career was a silver lining in the dark cloud of the pandem where you are you were a stand-up comedian, still are, yep. and coming to Phoenix. Yes. Link is gonna be in the show notes as to all of your tour December dates. December twenty third. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. <laughs> I would by the way, total side note, but I saw that there was a remake of Home Alone on Disney Plus. Tell me more right now. I would say, whatever you do, for the love of God, do not watch it. Just well, now don't. I have to watch it. Just don't. <laughs> Is Macaulay Culkin in it? Does he still play a child? I'll tell you this. I did. <laughs> he he plays the baby actually. Oh wow! Just <laughs> so he gets to go on the trip this time. <laughs> really? No, they leave the baby behind. He's he's oh, healthy. Okay. No, well, but um, it's uh, damn Macaulay. I don't even, well, I'll tell you this. It's a completely kind of different storyline, and I didn't watch enough of it to see if he was in it or not. But I did know that they dropped a little Easter egg of the home security system of the house it's broken into is McAllister Home Security. Oh, well, that's so, fun. That was the- Yeah, that was good the, for him. Right? That was the cutest Easter, that was the cutest part of the whole movie. I'll say that. How do you think that home that that home defense system works? Because it can't be normal. Well, so what they do is they install on the wall these these little Hot Wheels cars that when a door opens right. and the alarm system's on, they just shoot them out. <clears throat> right. They they heat up the handle real hot, so mm -hmm. they they also burn their hand. And imagine then just, just forgetting something back in your house, and you're like, oh, I got to run in real quick, and then you're like, oh, shoes, and then now you're inside, and a paint can is swinging down from the roof, and knocking your teeth out and you're like i just needed to grab my jacket this is not what i signed up for and they're like that's the McAllister McAllister promise that's what we do never we gonna just... forget my bucket of shrimp inside again <laughs> well you know when you're hasting for a crustacean you just you gotta be careful uh and McAllister 
<laughs> comes in with fury. It's it's faster than a swift shrimp escaping a whale shark. Kevin only has one mood, and it's murder. <laughs> it's <laughs> through the most annoying ways possible. I can't it's imagine little brother if, murder. Little brother murder. If if I died because I slipped on a Hot Wheels car, I would be so mad. I would be so pissed. <sighs> Was this Mario Kart? Was the was the banana? Is this how you is okay? No, no, no. I'm might as well just hit me with a blue shell because I'm ready to go. That I would take. I would if 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 my obituary <laughs> said he slipped on a banana peel and then was hit by a blue shell before he right before he got the golden star, I would say that may I rest in peace because that is all I need. <laughs> just bury me with my cart because I'm <laughs> I've done my rainbow road. I'm over. I'm good. Who's your main Who's your main character in Mario Kart? Who do you pick? Don Donkey Kong. Mm. I'm more yeah. of a Yoshi guy. Oh, yo, nice. Okay, yeah. very good. Cool. Feel... Mom, Donkey Kong. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if Donkey Kong says that. <laughs> that's Donkey Kong after he eats the full bucket of shrimp. That's, that's where the indigestion. That's Donkey Kong after he eats a whole pack of cigarettes. That's what that sounds like. <laughs> Donkey Kong. Oh, okay. It's not getting better. So I'm gonna. <laughs> It was a really good oh, effort. God. I appreciated it. Oh well, I appreciate you so much, Ben. <laughs> and this is this has been a, a really fun time. Should we should we talk about you? Should we? Um, I suppose so. Yeah, ask me the questions. We so I wanted to talk. We were talking about the dark cloud of the pandemic. You started getting mm -hmm. into TikTok, and that's right. when you decided. And I don't know why I'm telling the story, but uh, you you decided to do a skit a day. Yes. And until the pandemic ended, thinking the pandemic yep. was going to be, you know, maybe a fortnight. Yeah. yeah. Remember, and... hope? Remember that? That was oh, a good yeah. God, man, that distant, <laughs> distant glimmer of hope now <laughs> extinguished fully. But Whoops. but you ended up you, <laughs> yeah, you ended up doing it. You can't, just started to blow up on TikTok mm -hmm. and haven't stopped since. Right. Basically, I was uh, I was like two weeks into, or I was like uh, about a week into a comedy tour when everything got shut down. And I got an email that was like, hey, your next two weeks of work was canceled. Go home, cry. And I was like, yeah, okay, thanks for that very specific advice. I will do that email. And I stopped at a cookout, uh, at a cookout in Georgia. And I ate my feelings, which doesn't cost much there. You can buy all of your feelings for like $6.99 at cookout. It's great. Uh, with a oh. side of like corn dogs. It's, no, it's a wonderful time. And mm, so delicious. I ate my feelings. I drove back home to Florida uh, and then I, I cried uh, because the email oh. told me to. And then I was like, yeah, a sketch a day for, for two weeks. I can do that. That'll keep me active, keep my brain ready to go. And then day 13, I made fun of Florida for the first time. And the whole world was like, please do that again. We want, we want you to make fun of Florida again. And I was like, I can. I can do that a lot. So I did it again and it blew up again. And I was like, I, I will do this until you guys tell me to stop. And it's been almost two years and nobody's told me to stop. Well, I'm sure like a few people have told me to stop, but like most people have like told me to do more. So here I am two years in. I oh, know man. too much about uh, too little. But I, I feel I feel it's so good in terms of everyone I see is more glamorous and beautiful than the next. You get to dress up in a suit and also a fishing yeah. hat and whatever you want, depending on the state. So mm -hmm. I feel like it, things don't really get boring. And also, it seems like people people connect so much to their state. And yes. they also, I mean, you set it up so beautifully where you're like, okay, I can do my research, but I can also take in info from fans and people yeah. that are watching I get most of my information from fans and listeners and watchers that live in those specific states and tell me the very specific like state information and I write it down somewhere and I'm like, I guess I'll look at this again if I ever need to. The fun part is you have to make fun of people's home states in a way that they're proud of it. Yes. That it's tricky because uh, <clears throat> I am also not a huge believer in a lot of stereotypes, but there's, there's a lot of things where it's like, that is only specific to people from your area. And there's a lot of like blurriness and blurred edges around like where some states meet, like right. the panhandle of Florida does a lot of the same things as like lower Alabama. We, it, we just call the panhandle lower Alabama. 
And we also have uh, the Florida Georgia line where like anything around like North Florida, South Georgia, South, South Alabama, a lot of those things kind of mesh together and they act mm. sort of the same way. Sure. But there's yeah. also like words and cultures and, and attitudes that are very specific to Florida, making fun of people who live in Boca Raton because they're not from there because they're all from Boston and New York. That's a very specific to Florida thing because they all move there um uh, louisiana you can you can kind of make fun of cajun culture but in a way where it sounds like you're not Mm -hmm. it's more so you have more fun with the other characters where louisiana is very proud of his pedo do and his les les bon temps roule but like anytime he says those things every other state is like why are you like this please stop and whenever i do stuff like that people from louisiana just get a lot of pride of just like yeah no people hate it when we do this and we love it we're going to keep doing it. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and I, I also, I mean, you did an incredible job just talking about making fun of the state while also making the people feel, in a way that people feel proud of it. With Arizona too, I saw one of the videos where you were saying that Arizona is like the Florida of the, of West. the West. Yeah. And it was going into the, Florida and Arizona, we're going at it. And it made me feel I never thought I would feel proud to be not a Florida, but <laughs> a, a watered down Florida, like a not as good Florida. Sorta. But I yeah. I do. I feel I feel great about it. And I've also I mean, I've even learned a lot of facts, even about Florida in a podcast you had guested on. You were talking about how the oldest city in the country is in yep. Florida. Oh, my gosh. I wish I had Both remembered the name. Yes, because it's contested. One of them yeah. wasn't a state so for a one of them while. was incorporated. I believe it was Pensacola, Florida. It was incorporated in like 1663 or something. Uh, and then St. Augustine, Florida was incorporated in like 1665. I could be getting this off by a little bit. Uh, they might even be older. I don't even know. But Pensacola was incorporated first, like a few years before St. Augustine was. But then Pensacola lost its incorporation at some point for a few years got reincorporated later. So technically St. Augustine is the long is like the oldest incorporated city in the state of Florida because they never were unincorporated whereas Pensacola was first but they lost their incorporation at some point because people left and then people came back and then reincorporated. So Pensacola was huh. first and then stopped but uh St. Augustine is the oldest longest running incorporated city. And that's Damn. in the whole country. <clears throat> Damn. And then was it St. Augustine that has the Fountain Co- of Youth? Yeah, the Fountain of Youth. And then there's this yep. Coquina Castle. Oh, yeah. The Castillo de San Marco. It's a castle. It's a fort. It's most it's more a fort than it is a castle. And it's right on the okay. waterway. And the most useful rock in Florida is Coquina Rock. And it's very soft and porous. So if you ever shoot cannonballs at it the wall just kind of absorbs the cannonball and then just rolls back out. And if you go to the fort to this day, there's a bunch of cannonball holes just in the rock of the, the like in the walls of the fort. And the wall is totally fine. It's like watching a Tempur-Pedic with a wine glass on it where you can jump on one side yeah. and the wine glass isn't disturbed. The cannonball will put a hole in the wall where it hits, but none of the rest of the wall will be affected at all. I had heard you say that on another podcast and I thought that was the most, one of the coolest things that I've ever heard. Just imagining a cannonball just sinking in and then dropping out. And I had also, it stuck with me too because I I had heard on NPR, I usually listen to news while I scramble my eggs. And (laughs) I... That, not a euphemism, <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> and, and they were talking about co- the, the, yeah, <laughs> yes, over easy. And they ended up talking about, I think it was the fort where because of global warming or climate change, the sea levels were getting mm-hmm. a little higher. And it turns out one of the biggest weaknesses for Coquina is water and rising tides. And it would just slowly erode after yeah. time. And yeah, I, we I, use coquina rocks for seawalls in Florida because you, they're very light and they're all over the place and you can kind of pick them up and build them up like that. But yeah, the water does. I mean, the water will road anything. You can just look right. at the Grand Canyon for that. But hey, look, hitting home here. This is great. Yeah. Carving out <laughs> a great example. God. Uh, well, the beautiful. And then also coquina, that the name just sounds so be- It sounds like a competitor for Chipotle almost. I feel well, like I could get. 
you don't really need to do much to be a competitor of Chipotle other than not <laughs> give people E. coli or salmonella. As long as you're not actively murdering people several times a year, I think you're, you're probably doing better than Chipotle is. Or if you can just make co- uh, queso that doesn't taste like cardboard. This is now a Chipotle hate podcast. I'm so glad you are in this uh chipotle hate bowl with me because i feel yeah i I am so sick of chipotle i remember i used to be a big fan but then it's always bothered me so back in the southeast i don't think they're out in arizona i could be wrong but uh there's a place called moe's and yes southwest grill yeah 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 so moe's is just it's better it's just a better chipotle and we have those all over the place down in florida uh, anytime there's a Chipotle, there's a Moe's across the street. It, it's like Walgreens and CVS. Um, it's mm. it's a great rivalry. Anytime there's one, there's the other one. Moe's is just better. Uh, the food's cheaper. It tastes better. They'll give you more of it. And the queso yeah. actually yes. tastes good. Uh, so there, that it was just a natural rivalry when I was born. I was like, I got to pick a side, and I'm picking Moe's because it's better. And then every year... Chipotle had to be like, sorry, E. coli happened again. We don't wash our food. And then people died and got sick. And that never happened with Moe's. Moe's never did that. Moe's was like, we clean our food. Uh, so I never I never really understood why people loved Chipotle so much because they're paying more money for a worse product that has killed people multiple times for the same reason. This is probably the worst time to say this podcast brought to you by Chipotle. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) But saying that now out loud, it does make me realize that like somebody dated Ted Bundy after he got out of prison. So (laughs) (laughs) what are you going to do? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should just forget the past and what has been. (laughs) And move on into, I actually, I wanted to, I know you're coming to Arizona and I'm super psyched about mm-hmm. it. Everybody else listening should be as well. And I ended up, I wanted you, I know that you've got so much knowledge about every state, including Arizona, but I, I've prepared two truths and one lie for okay. the state of Arizona to just, okay. you know, warm you up to some, some good Arizona facts that I found on the internet and don't know are true anyway. So it might be three lies and no truths. Okay. Let's see what you got. All right, so round one, we've got um, the original London Bridge was shipped stone by stone and reconstructed in Lake Havasu City. Two, Arizona's Sonoran Desert is the only place on Earth where the iconic saguaro cactus grows. I, d- y- you're familiar with the saguaro? I am, yes. Okay. So, sorry, I don't <laughs> mean to contest. No, no, no that's familiar- fine. That's probably a pretty normal question for most other people. I remember watching a movie recently with Mark Wahlberg where he was in prison reading a book and he was like, did you know that saguaro cactus was uh, 200 feet tall? I don't know. He said some weird shit. In the Boston accent. Hey, you ever this uh, saguaro cactus? (laughs) Uh, Exactly. And his whole thing was he wanted. Big as fuck, dog. (laughs) It's wicked huge. I'm sorry, that's a horrible Boston <laughs> accent. But all right, and then the uh, the last one is the Arizona's kangaroo rat is the most aggressive of the Dipodemus genus. They grow up to sw- twice the size of a kangaroo and have been known to attack humans. Okay, so the saguaro one is true. Okay. And, oh, see, the thing is, I kangaroos get big and i feel like if there was an animal that could that could be twice the size of a king is this animal still alive like is this are they saying that it's still around they're still around yes kangaroo rats okay so you're confirming to me that that one's the truth i'm not i was gonna say i'm not i'm not (laughs) i'm not fucking i will not admit or deny the other facts about it but the kangaroo rat is still alive in this day and age okay and okay. in the sonora desert so your this one could be like it's almost true but the lie is that the is the that they don't get twice as big okay so i'm gonna go the kangaroo rat one is the lie they don't get to be twice as large as kangaroos well, you saw right through my pouch, and yes. you got it right, Ben. Let's that go. Is 300 Arizona points for you. 300 <laughs> rays of sunshine. 
<laughs> All right, we've got. We'll keep going with this. I had rounds. If it got boring, we would just cut it yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, round two is two of the top rated waterfalls in the United States are located in Arizona, Grand okay. Falls, and Havasu Falls. Okay. Two, Arizona's tallest mountain is Humpy's Peak, named after explorer <laughs> and philanderer Andrew A. Humpy in philanderer? 1870. Philanderer? Philanderer. <laughs> I may have underestimated my guest because I figured maybe that maybe just like a three syllable word would trip him up. But then I was like, you know what? This is Ben Brainerd. He's uh, he's going to see right through my bucket of shrimp. God damn it. OK, well, <laughs> what's the last one now? I the, have, last, I do the last one anyway. The last one is the Grand Canyon National Park is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And it's the oh, only that's one. That's the lie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. My first round was so good. In the desert that the whole world knows about. No way. Yeah. Humpy is the lie there. <laughs> yes. Uh which part of that is a lie though? Is it all of it? All right. So it's the tallest mountain is actually Humphrey's Peak, Humphreys. but I thought it would okay. be thought it would be fun to just yeah, I mean, it was fun. fun. I had a fun time. <laughs> it's good. All right. So we've got the last round and it is um <clears throat> the first one is the bolo tie do you know what the bolo tie is i do yeah when i saw it on google i've also it said bola but my family and i have always said bolo and my well, dad so bola is a... for women it's the spanish oh. word it's the o and a so bolo is uh the male and then bola is female i caramba that's <laughs> K Maravilla. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Uh, I speak Italian and Portuguese, but the Spanish is just not there. They're, they're, right. they're close. Not close enough. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, apparently not. I'm uh, <laughs> getting a bullet over here. So the bolo tie is the official state neckwear of Arizona. Mm -hmm. Two, it is illegal to refuse a person a glass of water. And three someone can face up to 25 years in prison for cutting a cactus down. Hmm. Okay. Something is telling me that I have seen the bolo tie thing before. As okay. The official, official uh, wear or the clothing. What did you say? The official necktie? The, the official neckwear. Neckwear. Okay. So I'm going to say that one's true. Because it's too silly to be a straightforward a lie. Um, it's illegal to refuse someone a glass of water. There's some room to play with that one. That could be, uh, yeah. So between the last two, it's pretty liquid. The, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. It, uh, is there a person who face up to 25 years for cutting down a cactus? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that one's a lie, but specifically because I. It's probably less time than that. It's probably like fi up to 15 years or something. <clears throat> well, Ben, you did so good until this one. And then you yeah. just uh, oh. got chopped down like a saguaro. Oh, no. You, you did so good. It, so that is correct. The, the lie is the to refuse a person a glass of water. It is not illegal. I thought <sighs> that it was illegal, but I think that it's illegal for a business to refuse you a yeah. glass of water. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. But you know that what? Makes as sense. as I was, much I was it was on the board. It was one of the ones. You know what? You did so so good under the heat of the Arizona sun, Ben. We're going to bring you into the shade and then we're going <laughs> to share this oasis with you. It's going to be oh, so wow, much thank fun. Thank you so much. I feel uh, honored. I feel welcomed. I feel warm and fuzzy. Oh, well, warm you shall feel and, uh, and even warmer because <laughs> during the sun, oh my, it changes. We're going to close off the podcast with mm -hmm. some advice from questions from the great gem uh, or great gold mine of Reddit and the Reddit oh, advice. Oh, yes, wonderful. Thread. Reddit is a gold mine. I don't know exactly what that mine is full of, but <laughs> there's there is stuff in it. There it's there's a lot of shiny stuff, a lot of stuff you shouldn't touch or look don't at. Don't touch it. Yeah, if you're going <laughs> to go into Reddit, 
wear protective gear. <laughs> it will scramble your eggs so easy. Mm -hmm. It's just it's like heat. what is it? What is that city you guys have? Sunset City or something like that? With the, where all the old people retire to, and then just and then just fuck. Yes, um, oh, there are so many of those, but no, no. Uh, uh, Sunrise oh or Sunset or something like that. Sunset Village. We have in Florida the Villages, which has the fastest growing rate of STDs in America, and it's a retirement community. <sighs> You know, I didn't know that until I watched the episode where you, Arizona and Florida were going at it. And I was like, yeah. what are the villages? And then the comments did not let me Don't down. go. Don't go. It's a gross place. <laughs> Man, I'm just, I'm smelling the syphilis from here. It's just. If you can smell not... it, it's you're too late. It's too late. You... I, I, it's, it's too late. It is already um, invaded it's, uh, your body. Half past, uh, half past herpes o'clock right now. And we got to. <laughs> It's swooped in like the Peregrine Falcon <laughs> dial-up internet. It's just cawing <laughs> in your veins. You're just so, never going to let that one go. I know. <laughs> just keep on winging it until I perch. <laughs> so we've got this question, and this one says, is it normal for platonic friends to stand so close to each other when taking a photo? I noticed my girlfriend has been taking mm. photos with a guy friend, but they seem to stand pretty close to each other. The guy stands behind her, and his face seems to touch her hair is it normal for platonic friends to do so should i be worried i come from a pretty conservative upbringing so it seems rather unusual to me okay so immediately if you come from a conservative upbringing probably all of your thoughts about other things are incorrect <laughs> fair, I, fair. I don't want to be rude but you're probably just wrong and uh, but on the opposite side of the coin as the police so famously once said don't stand, don't stand, don't stand so close to me. So I don't really even know. Like, ah, here's the thing. I'm fine with platonic. Like, I, when I, I ran cross country in high school, we wore short shorts. One year, we actually got new uniforms, and they were just the, the ladies' team's old uniforms. We just wore the skimpiest clothes, and uh, we we just we were very close friends. And I'm fine with just any sort of like platonic thing. The real answer here is if you're uncomfortable with it in your relationship, then it is your job to open that communication and set those boundaries with your partner. If your partner does not agree with those boundaries, then I'm sorry, that's probably not going to work out. But that's okay because there's 7 billion people on this planet and you're probably not supposed to get along with most of them. And that's fine if you don't. So if you're uncomfortable with your girlfriend standing next to another guy that closely, Tell her about that. If she doesn't like that, then it's her job to leave you and it's not your job to be upset because you can't control women anymore. It's we're past that. We're, it's not 1927 or 1978 or any time after or in between. You just shouldn't do it. So uh, well, just talk about it. Set your own boundaries. It's your relationship, not mine. But if you're going to do it, put on the police's don't stand so close to me. It might help. <laughs> Man, well, I loved how that answer developed with absolutely no filter either. It was just no. beautiful, raw, <laughs> and I feel like they can gaze at it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I feel like... I hope they God, hear this. I really, I hope they do too. And I'm also <laughs> imagining in my head, how far away do they stand when they're taking their pictures? Is well, it as a conservative, you're supposed to leave room for Jesus. And now the question there is... I don't know if it's Jesus uh, with his arms down or if it's Jesus doing the iconic T pose. Oh, the, yes. Because the, if it's leaving room for Jesus on the cross, then I don't know why so many of them are upset about having to wait six feet behind somebody else because that's about <laughs> six feet. Stand one crucifix apart. And yeah, you're... stand one crucifix away from your partner. I feel like if we if we led with that, the, uh, the South wouldn't be in as much trouble as it is. Oh, God. You know what? You're absolutely right. And it, it just reminded me, I used to work in, if you ever have the chance, go to Jerome, Arizona. It's a ghost okay. town. It used to be... Are you saying a ghost town is in there's nobody there or it's a town full of ghosts? Both. Both. Okay, cool, There, cool, there cool, is cool, my, cool. my... Yes, just um, it, it's a, a specter. A coal. And my grandpa, Ooh. he came, th thank you for that, sorry. And uh, my grandpa, he came from Italy and he and his family, they worked in the mines and mined all the mm -hmm. copper there was no more copper left so everybody left right they also okay. were real dumb because they built the city on a mountain so things would yeah. just slide down occasionally but 
they they've rejuvenated the place. I think three hundred people Are in total. Are you telling me to there. go play in a mine shaft? <laughs> I, uh, that's where this long and winding road was going down. You needed a torchlight <laughs> to be able to, to to finish it. No, but they've got a lot of cool restaurants. It's all ghost themed. Okay. And then I remember when I worked in the restaurant on the top of the mountain, there was a hotel. It used to be a hospital, so it's haunted. <laughs> and so everybody's got a picture. Or they have pictures of company gatherings and stuff like that. And they have, uh-huh. you know, those those white blurred out parts in the photo that they think are a ghost. Oh, yeah. yeah. Orbs and stuff. Yes. Orbs and stuff. Yeah. So, I, man, what a cool store with knickknacks. Hey, welcome to <laughs> Orbs and Stuff. So <laughs> we got orbs and we got stuff. Stuff. What are you looking for? <laughs> also a great radio team. Hey, welcome to K Country in the morning. It's Orbs, and I'm Stuff. Anyway, <laughs> I just fun ima- fact: the the mascot for the Orlando Magic basketball team is Stuff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> oh no! Is so really? I feel like a, a magic, like the NBA, the Magic. You could they could have a podcast or a radio show called Orbs and Stuff. Orbs the magician and Stuff the Magic Dragon. Oh Orbs and stuff, my god! Morning radio. Orbs and stuff. Oh man! Copyright this... Ben Brader, twenty twenty one. So if yes. you want it, magic, hit me up, dogs. Stefan Satani clinging on to that trademark <laughs> like <laughs> like a shrimp in a bucket, just hoping <laughs> somebody will just take him. On for dear life inside this Dairy Queen <laughs> yeah. right now. Oh god! But I think where I was trying to go in that very long story was I was just imagining conservatives having pictures where they're Jesus length apart, and then you can see the orb of Jesus just right in between every single person. <laughs> this is how I know he's real, son. <laughs> you see that T pose right in the middle there? That's Jesus Christ himself. Uh, I told you he was around. He's inside of us, and he's right next to us. So. <laughs> trying to tell me you don't believe. <laughs> you don't believe with your own eyes. You don't believe with your own eyes, boy. What do you think this is? The internet, you're supposed to believe it. Well, now that all of my Christian fan base is very cross with all of us, um, I feel uh, like... Well, they should be cross anyway. <laughs> we can we can resurrect this with our last <laughs> question. And the Just last give it three question. days. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, well... Uh... The worst part is I'm educated enough about this stuff to keep going. Oh, well... Unlike Jesus, who had an expiration date. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm picking up a cent. Whoops. <laughs> it, is, it is beautiful all right um this last question from reddit mm-hmm. it says i got my stepmom for secret santa she despises me but i do love her and want to get a good Dick gift in a box oh man i don't even think i have Dick in a box <clears throat> uh, sing you don't a song know with what it. a dick in a box is first step one get a box uh step two <laughs> get put a your dick. dick inside uh, step three <laughs> Dick in a box. Uh, there's a whole song, uh, in case you forget how it goes, you can just YouTube. If you just go on YouTube and you type in dick in a box, there's a there's a group that, that does all the, the, the steps for you. So. I'm so sorry, by the way, that I did not Justin Timberlake you <laughs> And I just stood there gawking because I have I've seen that so many times. I even tried to do a little jab, like get a dick, and you're just trying to do the routine. Oh my god, I am so sorry. I was a dick out of the box. You're gonna, I was just. I'm sorry. You're gonna lead with I got my stepmom for Secret Santa, and not think that I'm immediately gonna say dick in a box. <laughs> you know, my I had no foresight. And no foreskin. <laughs> so it's just, <laughs> just just circumcised and dickless. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, boxless. Boxless. I have no, <laughs> I can't contain myself. So I hey, dick in the box. I think I think that's a perfect gift idea though. Dick in <laughs> was that even the full question? I have no idea. There's just, so what, much what more. I get her? Oh, there's do so much. Well, yeah, let me hear it. Do, do you want to hear it or do you Yeah, absolutely? I mean, I'm oh. probably gonna stick with dick in a box, but yeah, yeah, I was going to snip it, but I feel like we can just keep going. All right, unfolding. I, male 23, don't know why my stepmom, female 40, doesn't like me, but everything I do, she just takes offense to. So we've got male and female. The okay. dick in the box solution still works. Sure. 
Like one time, she and my father told all the kids that they were getting divorced because there's too much stress. They cited a dirty home as one of the reasons they were considering divorce. The next day, I spent six to seven hours deep cleaning the fridge and pantry. It was gross. I dry heaved every few seconds in the fridge, but I felt glad knowing that I was helping them not get divorced. I'm sorry. When my pause. Please. It took you six to seven hours to <laughs> clean a fridge and a pantry, and it made you dry heave. You need to get out of the house. You need to divorce that house. Burn it to the ground. That's disgusting. Who are you living with? Why are that's, you living there? That sounds awful. That sounds absolutely awful. I'm, I know he didn't say it out loud, but I'm pretty sure this guy's dad is Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> Who who would Oscar the Grouch marry, by the way, if we're going to play matchmaker on Sesame Street? I don't know if I remember many of the characters. A New York City <laughs> garbage man. <laughs> you bring any trash home from me. You know what? No, I take that back. Oscar the Grouch would marry Dana DeVito's character, specifically from that one episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where he turns into the trash man. Oh my God. Oh my God. I throw what a bunch a... of trash all over the ring and then I get inside and I roll around in the trash. I'm the trash man. Oh, and then he, did he accidentally slit some part of cricket? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't remember. All I remember is oh, did I speech. get you cricket? I think, I think he accidentally got him with a piece of, of rusty garbage and then just... <laughs> sliced cricket and then he ended up getting even more ugly oh what a <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful show what a wonderful I'm show i'm the trash man i'm the trash man oh, i wish i could do a nice devito you do a pretty good devito thank you i, I do impressions for a living do you is there an impression that you're particularly proud of one that you think hey this is so good i'm so glad you asked <clears throat> oh boy mickey mouse here welcome to my clubhouse are you ready to have a good time today children dude oh oh my god you've got the magic in you wow i've heard a lot of mickey mice <laughs> but that one was the most oh, holy shit dude I, yeah I, I can't even stop I've talking that was amazing around i've walked around disney doing this voice before everyone stops and looks Holy shit, dude, congratulations. My hat and, and wh white gloves off to you. That was <laughs> so good. I do a couple of jokes with uh, the Mickey voice just because I, I can do the voice, so I might as well have it. There's an old one that I don't do anymore. And then I do one now where I just talk about like the difference between living in California and living in Florida. And one of those differences being like, now I have Disneyland as opposed to Disney World. and. It makes me upset when people say that Disneyland is better because obviously it's not. You can fit Disneyland in the parking lot of Magic Kingdom, in, of just Magic Kingdom, and have room for 500 more cars to park. There's no way that, that one thing is better than the literal 42 square miles of Disney World. Holy fuck. Um, but I, in that joke, uh -huh. I just kind of go, I hear somebody say that Disneyland was bigger than Disney World, and I got upset, so I put on my Mickey ears, and I pulled out my mouse and knife, and I just kind of went, not my clubhouse, Stan. <laughs> Uh, and then the old joke that I don't do anymore, it's still a very fun Mickey line of uh, today's episode uh -huh. was brought to you by the letter B. Can you say bondage? <laughs> oh, fuck. Holy shit. The... Man, that's amazing. That truly is amazing. The only Disney related character that I can closely do is Winnie the Pooh, but he starts to sound real mm -hmm. creepy. Okay. Uh, I, if I do, I shouldn't have spoiled it with. I should have made you gasp. <laughs> so. uh, hello, Ben. Can I get you some honey? <laughs> and then it's, it starts like creeping. To, hey, I think what you said was, I can whisper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bother. Oh, oh, how about a smackerel of honey? Is that just a whisper? Is that all? <laughs> it, it is not, it's not the worst I've ever heard. <laughs> it's 
Well, okay. Well, just poo all over my poo then, I guess. <laughs> the the only other ones that I'm kind of proud of are mm-hmm. Owen. Well, hold on. Hey, everybody. I have. I was in cars. Oh. I can do a pretty good dog because I had a dog wow. in Marley. I lost the dog, but wow. um, then I I started doing a podcast. This podcast brought to you by Manscaped. Wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. That's that's uh, actually really good. That's a really good one. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna when I do my TikTok sketches, I'm gonna break my nose in five places to get it really. This this hair has been all, dude. I used to go so short. So if you're gonna, gonna do be... a bit, commit. Commit, right? Absolutely. Whoa, bit! I thought you said east. <laughs> <laughs> Crabs going after the secret formula. No, this is Patrick. Oh, sorry, Patrick. <laughs> oh, it's starting to get more. Hey, I love you. Oh, I, no, I don't mean you, you don't know, you don't eat this chocolate. Uh, you uh, rub it all over yourself and it makes you live forever. Why have chocolate when you can have honey? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I feel like. You know, I could just stick to you like honey for a long time, Ben, but we have to reach the that end of the, the pot. the grossest way to say we're friends. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was just a smack roll <laughs> of the expression that I was feeling. But, you know, let's close that honey pot, throw it in the closet along with my poo impression, and <laughs> let's bring out the gra- the bucket of gratitude that I have mm-hmm. for you for joining me and talking about so much and so little all at the same time. It's, it's been Yeah, we did very little. We we, <laughs> we did we did so little. Oh yeah. god. If we were if we were shrimp, we would be behind the whole um conglomerate. I think is that what they call a group I'm of shrimp? I'm not sure what you're going for, honestly. I I don't a uh, school. A, yeah, that's what I was Oh, yeah. it would be would be Academy? two trillion. Oh, oh my god! I feel like shit. I should just stop <laughs> recording right now. That was the best place to end it on. <laughs> but Ben, I also I wanted to ask you know, well, first off, a pledge, and then second, where can people find you? What have you got going on? I know you're going to be in Phoenix, and the links are going to be in the show notes, so people can just clicky click click all over there. Yeah. Um, but what, what else? Time have you got does going this on? episode come out? This what episode day? is going to come out next Monday. Okay, so the twentieth, <laughs> right? Yeah, that that's right. You sounded like my dad when he asked the question, and I he doesn't get the right answer, and then because you said what day, <laughs> what date, and I was like Monday, and then you're like, okay, so the twentieth, right? Got date? it. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm so, I'm I just so, have to make sure I'm so sorry. I know what else I can plug here. But yeah, if you want to find me, all of my links are just on my website, which is benbrainer.com. It's spelled brain a r d if you can't figure that out try using yours or, or ask a friend with one um that has links to all of my social medias and all my show dates and all that so this is coming out on the 20th which means tomorrow i will be in san antonio texas at the laugh out loud comedy club on uh tw- the 22nd i will be in dallas at the addison improv and then the 23rd i'll be in phoenix arizona at uh stand up live i also have a bunch of shows coming up in january and february and march of next year Uh, So just go on my website and look at shows. There's also an email list you can sign up for on my website and then you will get emailed whenever I have shows in your area. And that's the episode, my little sweeties. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you just relished every single bite. And I really am thankful that you guys stayed for the whole course and just didn't run away in the middle of dinner like my little naff, like my wife sometimes when I cook. But you know what? It was amazing for me, and I'm glad it was amazing for you. If you guys haven't yet, please leave a review. Man, I'm just Dr. Seuss in it. All up in here except for the racist bits. Yeah, I will say I will not have that in my house or in anyone's house. So thank you guys so much. Uh, links in the show notes to support Ben. See him live. See me live. Follow me. All that good stuff. And with that, this is the Christmas episode. I don't think I had any Christmassy things to say except... Oh, Ho, ho, ho to y'all. And I love you. And I want to fill your stocking with so much good stuff. 
And I hope someone fills your stocking with good, tasty presents. Love you all. Big old smooch on the gooch. Bye-bye.